Error handling is the process of anticipating and working with the possibility of failure. Learning how to manage errors effectively in Rust before they become a problem will be extremely helpful at saving you time and sanity. In this video, I'll describe the multiple ways to handle errors in Rust. We'll focus on using panic to deal with unrecoverable errors, option for possible non-existent values, and result for handling other things that might go wrong. Panicking is the simplest way to handle errors in Rust. You can use the panic macro to quit the program execution. Using a panic macro would look like this. Wherever we want inside of a main function, we can include the panic macro along with a message to print out when the program stops executing. So what happens when the panic macro executes? First, a failure message will be printed. Then the program unwinds and cleans up the stack, and then it quits. Generally, a panic macro should only be used when a program comes to an unrecoverable state. REST can also emit a panic on some operations, such as division by zero or an attempt to access an index that isn't an array, a vector, or a hash map. Take, for example, this piece of code. Here we have a vector with items 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then we try to print out the value of v at index 6. This will cause a panic because there is no v of index 6. The maximum index that we have in this vector is 3. Many errors aren't so bad that the program needs to stop and panic. Maybe you encounter a recoverable error where you need to handle the absence of values. The option T enum, as introduced in the enum video, manages the possibility of a null or non-existent value. The option enum is defined as the following. We have an enum called option T with two variants, none and some. The T part of option T states that the type T is a generic and associated with the sum variant. None indicates that no element was found, and some means that an element of type T was found. If the value exists at a specified index, it's wrapped in the option sum value, where the value is type t. If the index is out of bounds, it will return an option none value instead. For other recoverable errors that are more common, the result type can be used. Examples of recoverable errors might be when a function fails or an operation that you expect to work doesn't. Maybe your program tries to open a file that doesn't yet exist. Luckily, Rust provides the result enum for returning and propagating errors. The result enum is defined as the following. We have an enum name result with type T and E. These are both generic types, and the variants that the result enum has are OK and T. So the OK T variant represents a success and contains a value. The error E variant represents an error. The result enum is principally used for input and output operations, such as parsing strings into other types, file access, and data validation. In contrast to the option type, which describes the possibility of the absence of a value, the result type is best suited whenever failures are expected. The result type also has the unwrap and expect helper methods. If the result value is the OK variant, the unwrap method will return the value inside OK. If the result is the error variant, unwrap will call the panic macro for us. The expect method is used in a similar way as unwrap, where it either returns a value or calls the panic macro. When it calls the panic macro, it allows us to also write a detailed error message. The last thing I want to call out is the question mark operator. This operator works similar to how match statements work, but eliminates the need for an entire statement and only a question mark is used. The question mark operator applies to a result value and unwraps the inner value if it was the OK variant. If the result is the error variant, it returns from the point of the function you're currently in. The question mark operator can also be used with the option enum, where a value will be returned for some variant of t, and none will be returned for the none variant. Instead of needing a match statement, only the question mark operator is needed. This makes code look cleaner and still allows us to handle errors nicely, passing them up the call stack. That is the overview of REST error handling features. The various options for error handling exist to help you write more robust code. Becoming familiar with when and how to use these error types can make all the difference in ensuring your code is reliable and safe.
In the next video, I'll explore more code examples using the various forms of error handling. Thank you.